but uh, this airlift that I did a quick shot of is my idea of something that's three to five times more efficient than any other way you can collect all sizes quickly of urchins. We can strip North Casper with an airlift, two, two airlifts, two divers in 100 days of work. And if we were paid one dollar a pound, not five or ten dollars a pound, which is the result of nonprofits that claim they're doing it and spend three quarters of their money on other things. If we can spend just a hundred days at North Casper, the kelp will come back because we can eliminate the purple urchins there. There aren't enough red urchins to hurt the problem. Uh, but purple urchins are eating two to five times normal because they're in a starvation state and they exist every one to five inches apart. The video you'll see is not a heavily concentrated area. It was a difficult area to remove. Pea gravel and rocks mixed with the urchins make it almost impossible with a, a rake and a basket together. But with an airlift and a mild suction device directing the flow of the weightless empty urchins, you can see how it works. Thanks for your time. This, this is a tool that I use and uh, it works very well. It's been modified many times until the chiseled nozzle is very selective, the pressure of the airlift is low, it doesn't suck anything but urchins up, and an occasional small snail of some kind, but this is the way to remove urchins by the thousands, by the tens of thousands each. I'm Anna Newman and I'm the Harbor Master for the Noyo Harbor District. I've been in this position for about two years now, be two years in September. I actually moved to the North Coast to do research with Reef Check California. So I'm a diver and I was here through the closure of the abalone. I worked with Nature Conservancy to start their first abalone measurement program through Reef Check. So I really understand how the ecosystem has changed over the last 10 years and I've witnessed all of it. It actually inspired me to go back to school to get my master's in fisheries policy. I was seeing a lot of changes in the ecosystem that wasn't being transferred into the proper policy. And even now we're struggling, we're managing a kelp forest ecosystem, but that's not the ecosystem we have anymore. And I think that's going to play out um, in waves over the next 15, 20 years for all of our different fisheries, not just our urchin fishery, but our rockfish and our crab. We know that kelp is the basis of our local ecosystems. It's the nursery habitat. It provides a huge amount of support and nutrients all the way through ecosystems, beach ecosystems and offshore ecosystems as well. So to lose that in such a grand way, those ripples are just gonna go through every aspect of our fishery and then every aspect of our community. I think I didn't realize when I became Harbor Master that we have 80 small businesses located here in Noyo Harbor alone. And each of these boats that fishes is a small business and a small business owner that's supporting a local family. So as that ecosystem has changed and as those ripples come through, that's gonna affect all of the families that base their livelihoods off of commercial fishing and off of the ocean. And it's something that I think we need to prepare ourselves for in every aspect that we can because we have a deep cultural heritage out of this ocean. And I know more than any that it's really hard to translate from working on the back deck of a boat into an office. And thankfully I'm young and I've been able to do it, but the, a lot of the guys here aren't gonna have the opportunities that I had, won't have the opportunity to go back to school and restart themselves. So what can we do to highlight this amazing heritage that they have, this insane knowledge that they've accumulated from years on the sea, and make sure that they're successful and make sure that their families thrive into the future. And all of this is really stemming from a lot of that kelp forest degradation. And all of this work that we're doing on kelp forest restoration is so imperative. The work for the Watermen's Alliance, the work that the Nature Conservancy's done in the past couple of years, Reef Check California, Ocean Protection Council. We can't solve this problem alone. 
and I think it would be ignorant of us to do nothing. We've had our hand in the ocean's proverbial cookie jar for years. So if we step back and pretend like it's gonna take care of itself, we're fooling ourselves. We need to figure out the ecosystems that we want, how to help them get there, and we need to regulate for that and work together as a team from the fishermen all the way through to the policymakers in Sacramento. There's a ball valve here that controls the airflow. The ball valve open. Yeah, excuse me, I bent it in ramming it open like this will lift the whole thing off the bottom. We operate the airlift at about one quarter opening and this is a quarter inch ball valve. It doesn't take much air but if you were to see inside this cylinder that's fiberglass over 1200 holes those air holes produce tiny bubbles that climb the sides of the walls of this tube go up over the top of the elbow where a screen at the top lets the air out and down into a net. The net's up on top of the boat or closed mesh about a quarter inch diameter uh, so that the smallest urchins can't escape.